Hey everyone, Big Paulie back for a brand new video. This video may be a little bit ranty, so just giving you a heads up. I went to see Fast and Furious 9 about a week ago. F9, you can't do that with a car. <laughs> That's what I've come to call it. Uh, on the most part, I enjoyed the action. But it took me a couple of days to think about exactly what we were seeing in the film. And a few things kind of niggled me, didn't sit right and annoyed me. So uh, I drew up a top 10 list of things that I think ruined Fast and Furious 9. So let's get into it then. Okay, so I do have the list on my iPad here. So if you can see a white reflection, it's just my iPad. Fast and Furious 9. Things I didn't like. These are in no particular order. So I'm just going to go through all 10 that I have. Excuse the seagulls. They are noisy gits. Right. First up. Dom and Jacob younger actors. Uh, now the backstory of this was they showed us flashbacks of going back to when they were young in their NASCAR racing days, I believe it's probably NASCAR, with their father. Uh, and the thing that niggled me was that both the actors that they picked to play Dom and Jacob bore absolutely no resemblance to the actors later on. I'm sure there were probably a few other younger actors out there that had uh, a bit more striking resemblance to John Cena uh, and Vin, Vin Diesel. So um, yeah, it didn't really work. Uh, and also the height difference when they were standing next to each other didn't really work compared with later on. Okay, now Probably you would think that this would be last on the list, but as I say, it's not in any particular order. Cars in space. Yeah. Even the police are coming to warn me about cars in space. Now, when we meet up with Lucas, is it Lucas Black? He's testing out this thruster, this rocket on the top of a car, which explodes in a very familiar territory, uh, where they actually test this rocket, I swear that's actually the same location that The Force Awakens was filmed, this abandoned old RAF base or something. It looked exactly the same as where the Falcon was parked. Now, the next time we see this car is on the top of an aeroplane and they fire it off up into space. Do you know what boosters they would need to actually get this car lifted into space? Look at the space shuttle boosters. How much fuel would they need to fire it off into space? Uh, they wouldn't be able to completely seal the car. I mean, this is not a rocket scientist. This is a this is a street racer that struck stuck a rocket on the top of a car. He's not qualified NASA technician. He hasn't got all the materials to seal this car. What about like the undercarriage and everything? That brings me on to another thing. How the hell did they get a heat shield fitted to the bottom of this car? How many years does it take NASA to fit these tiles to the bottom of a space shuttle? And all of a sudden, it's just slapped on the bottom of it. What did it just come in one piece and they just clicked it on with Lego? No, we're not that stupid. We're not that stupid. That's the thing. It's an enjoyable film for what it is, all the action included. But there's got to be a certain amount of believability. Uh, and for me, this is a step too far. It had thrusters. So when they were in space, it had like shuttle thrusters. Who fitted those? I'm sure Lucas Black didn't fit them. And what about the space suits? Deep sea diving suits? Were these suits fitted with 
all this technology with all these wires heating the inside of the suit extra layers of uh, insulation no it wasn't no it's just a, a deep sea diving suit that they probably picked off the shelf at walmart or bought from ebay or some shit like that uh, and here's another thing after they've done whatever they've done in space with this satellite which i want to know how that car survived hitting that satellite um the next time we see tyrese gibson and Ludacris, they're down sitting eating food at a table waiting for brian to turn up how did they get down to earth they've got a steering wheel how the fuck did they actually navigate down through the atmosphere, not get burnt up? Ah, uh, I don't know. So, as far as science is concerned, that's a lot of bollocks, that car. Uh, the next thing on my list, magnets. <laughs> Everybody likes a nice magnet. I've got shitloads of magnets on my fridge downstairs. But I couldn't pull a fucking car through the house with them. Now, we saw in the trailer they had a magnet attached to a plane. I think, actually, if the plane had actually tried to pick the car up, it probably would have ripped its roof off. Uh, but the bit that gets me is when they're driving through the city and they crank it up and it just throws these cars all over the place. Uh, it pulls a car through a building from one side to the other we don't give a crap about what's in the middle which we will get to in a minute and then the car just slams right into the side of that van doesn't knock it over just straight into the straight into the magnet the power behind that magnet Yes, it pulled a few other things, like some knives and forks and maybe a, a bin, a metal bin lid. It should have ripped the shit out of that building. If that magnet was that powerful, it should have ripped the metal girders out of that building and that building should have collapsed. And what about everything else metal that's in the buildings? Where's all that shit? Where's all the door handles and uh, other shit like that? So that's the magnets. Uh, my next one on the list is John Cena. Uh, John Cena, he was good in Bumblebee. I enjoyed his performance in Bumblebee. He's a shit actor. I don't know why they employ him. He has got the facial expression of a constipated turtle no disrespect to the teenage mutant ninja turtles they have an excuse but john cena karnak for shit his expressions are like hey john cena you've just won 50 billion dollars on the uh, lottery yay and it was the wrong actor to play Dom's brother. Also, when he got double crossed at the end of the film, all of a sudden he he turned. He like, oh, oh, okay, all right, then I'll be with you now, Dom. I'll help you. I suppose that's a way to write him into Fast Ten. But he switched from beating the shit out of his brother and the rest of the gang. Just like that. I'll help you, Dom. Charlie's Theron. As Cy uh, Cypher? Cypher, yes. She was good in Fast 8. I, th I thought she was a really good female villain in Fast 8. And she had a reason for what she was doing. Here, she's kind of reduced to Javier Bardem in Skyfall. She's just sitting on her ass in a plastic box, not doing anything. When she does get out, she types a couple of keys and that's it. Pretty much wasted through the entire film. That crap villain that was, that uh, 
Jacob was working for? What the point was he? Why didn't they just get him out? Why wasn't it John Cena and she, he was working for Charlize Theron? That would have been more believable. So, yeah, that, that crap of villain, he had no purpose in the film. Right, before we continue, um, I do have a special guest who's going to share some of his thoughts on the Fast and Furious 9 film. So, Rob, take it away. Hello, this is Rob from Rob Effects Bounty. And what are my thoughts on F9? So here we have Fast 9, a film series that's all about family, but we only find out in the 10th or 9th instalment that Dom has a brother. Mm. So we have a returning Lucas Black. It's good to see him again. He doesn't look the best at the moment. Looks like a, a pop vinyl figure, to be honest with his massive head. And between this film, or Tokyo Drift and this film, he's now become a rocket scientist. What? We also have Vin Diesel. You know, his role in this film is like Hobbs's role in the other films. You know, he's, he's superhuman. You know, the bit where he's fighting about 30 Agent Smiths, pretty much, when he pulls the building down, it's absolutely ridiculous. He falls so high. And literally, he's the only one that survives that scene. This film is a fucking joke. I've already expressed my feelings about John Cena in my video. You know, his expression for the whole film is... That's the range of John Cena. Even the guys, when they do a flashback at the beginning, when they're kids, they look nothing like Vin Diesel and John Cena. For me, the worst film in the series was Too Fast or Furious. It was the worst in the series. F9 is pure laziness. They can't even call it Fast and Furious. It's just F9. We know the next title is just going to be 10 or the Roman numeral X or just a picture of a car, or a picture of a spaceship, or aliens, or transformers. Who cares anymore? Just want to say thank you to Paul for letting me share my opinion. See you real soon. Roll on Fast 48. Okay, thank you very much for that, Rob. We all know Rob's uh, opinion on the film and believability of it. The next thing on the list is the complete disregard for any other human. So there is chaos everywhere. There is explosions. There are cars ripping through buildings. How many people were sitting at their desks in that building and all of a sudden got slapped in the head by a car? There's not even any mention or any thought of how many casualties they've created along the way. What about when the car with the magnets or the van with the magnets sucks the two cars in and then they crank it up and the car goes smack against all these other cars that were all parked up, lined up. How do you know that there wasn't a mum and a couple of babies in one of those cars? So there's absolutely no disregard for anybody else outside of the Fast family. <laughs> this is getting heavy, isn't it? It's getting real heavy. Uh, also, I think what really did harm the film was the absence of Jason Statham and Dwayne Johnson. They were great in the last couple of films. They were the comic relief. They had great scenes. Although Fast and Furious 8 is lower down on a lot of people's lists, that scene with Jason Statham and the baby on the plane fighting all those bad guys was classic. It was fantastic. So the absence of those two, unfortunately, did harm the film. Yay, roll on Hobbs and Shaw 2. <laughs> uh, next on my list is um, hardly a scratch on any of the cast members. Yes, it takes an awful lot of shit to ruffle someone's clothes or put a little scar down their face that scene where dom and letty jump off the edge of the cliff it gets attached by a piece of string it tarzan style they flip it over it rolls about a thousand times on the other side the windscreens are smashed and that letty just looks at dom like hmm this is pretty good 
not a scratch on them. It's like Die Hard. It's like the, the, the original Die Hard you felt for Bruce Willis, especially like when he was walking across that glass. That T-shirt was never white. Um, but when it came to Die Hard 5, the last Die Hard, you could throw a fucking nuclear weapon at Bruce Willis and he still wouldn't have a dirty T-shirt or a scar down his face. So, yeah, uh, they were invincible. All these casts were invincible. There was no danger. So you knew that they were going to survive. Uh, and the scene at the end when Charlize fires the missile from the plane onto the lorry before it rolls off the cliff and Dom jumps out of the cab. That is a shit piece of special effects. Absolutely shit. The way that he jumps out. It's like, oh, that's clearly CGI. And it's bad CGI as well. Uh, next on my list is Mia uh, joins Letty for action while Brian babysits. Brian would never let Maya go out, put herself in danger, put her life in danger, the mother of their baby, while he sits at home changing shitty nappies and feeding Farley's risks to a baby. Never. Get a babysitter and then Brian can come out and help. So, yeah, they should have left Maya out of it. Left, just... That's the reason for writing them out, obviously, with what happened to Brian, you know, Paul Walker. But let them simmer to the side. That's another thing. I enjoyed the scene right at the very end when the car pulled up and we knew that it was Brian. But I would have liked his brothers to be involved in maybe a CGI'd Brian walking to the, the table, sitting down and smiling. And digging into his food. That would have been good. The last one on my list. Is not about. More about the films. It's more about the production side of it. Uh, the fact that this film. Was a bit of a. One of them. Because it was not written. By Chris Morgan. <clears throat> yes. Chris Morgan who helped pen. Fast and Furious 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and Hobbs and Shaw. And most of those are great films. 5 is a great film, 6 is a great film, 7 is a great film. Hobbs and Shaw is a really entertaining film. Uh, and with the absence of Chris Morgan, that's what happened. So there we go. That is my list of... 10 reasons why Fast and Furious 9 or F9 or you really cannot do that with a car in space <sighs> ruined it and I can only hope that they see their mistakes in Fast 10 and 11 or Fast 10 part 1 and part 2 whatever they're going to do and uh, think about the audience and think about we're not all dumb shits believing the impossibility. Because if that's the case, then how do we know that they're not intending to land a souped up Fiat Uno on the moon? Yes, there we go. So they are my comments. They are my opinions. That's what I've been thinking about. On the most part, I kind of did enjoy the film for the action, the stupidity of it, but there were 10, maybe more, more than 10 things that I would have liked done different or were just ridiculous and they shouldn't have done it. So that is my list. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Like it by giving it some thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Stick down below. How did you feel about the... Uh, the Fast and Furious 9 movie, was it ridiculous? Was the action crap? Did you really enjoy it? I know someone said uh, on one of my, on the Facebook page that it's the best of the Fast and Furious films. I can't agree with that, but I'm happy that you, you think that way. I will be 
changing my rating for it because I did give it seven, which for me is pretty good. But come to think of it now, thinking up against all of the other films, I think seven is really too high. So I'm downgrading my rating. I've never done that before, but I'm downgrading my rating to five and a half big poolies out of ten. I think that's more fair compared with how many of the other fast films I enjoy more. So yes, five five point five. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Until the next one, bye.